Namaste students. Today we are going to learn a new poem that is a labanum talk by Ted Hertz. Before we start the poem, let us know about what is labanum. Labanum is nothing else but a beautiful tree which is not very big in height but a small tree which has yellow leaves. So it leaves turns yellow during autumn and it has yellow flowers. Flowers are like bars. So this yellow flowers beautifies the trees and this particular tree is used as an ornamental tree in the garden which beautifies the garden. And this particular tree is mostly found in the southernmost part of Europe. This is said to be the poisonous tree because each and every part of this tree is very very poisonous. But because of its beauty, the beautiful flowers, the yellow color flowers, it beautifies the garden. It is planted over there, it is grown over there. So, Let's now move to the next part that is to know about the poet Ted Hutz. His real name is Edward James Hutz. He was an English poet, he was a translator and most important thing he was children's writer. Critics frequently rank him as one of the best poets of his generation and one of the 20th century's greatest writers. He was appointed as poet laureate in 1984 and he held the office until his death. So when was he born and when he died? His date of birth is 17th of August 1930 and he died on 28th October 1998. So this was regarding the poet. Let's begin, let's see what he says in the poem. This is just the theme of the poem in short and then we'll go in detail about the poem. The poem The Labanum Top is a beautiful poem in which the poet has used the labanum tree and goldfinch as a symbol of life and its fluctuations. In this poem, the poet describes how the visit of a goldfinch changes the labanum tree. The goldfinch transforms the tree and makes it come alive as the chicks of the goldfinch start to rustle and chirrup on seeing her. Once the goldfinch leaves the tree, it becomes quiet and still again. The labyrinth tree symbolizes the pattern of our life in general, which is usually dull and inanimate. The goldfinch breaks the usual pattern and makes it lively. Without the goldfinch, the labyrinth tree is just like another tree. In other words, it is the attitude of a person towards life that makes life meaningful and worth living. So this is what this is the main gist of, of this poem. It's a beautiful short poem which gives a very meaningful, you can say which gives a very strong lesson to us how we take our life, how we live our life. It depends on us. Life is okay dull but it depends on a person how he makes his life. So here we have the example of a labanum tree as life and the fluctuations is symbolized by the goldfinch. So here the poem begins. I have used the words or you can say figures of speech in red and the meaning of the words in the next slides I have given it I have underlined the words which are difficult to understand or you can say the poet is using here to emphasize certain thing in the poem. The labyrinth top is silent, quiet, still in the afternoon yellow September sunlight. Now September sunlight here is alliteration because the sound of sir, sir is repeated. A few leaves yellowing, all its seeds fall. You can see in the picture you have a labyrinth, beautiful labyrinth tree. All the other trees they are of green color, dark green color, light green color, but this particular tree is you know it attracts us because of its yellow color so here the labanum top top in the sense the top of the tree the labanum top is silent we don't know what is happening inside the tree in the interior but the top of the tree is silent the labanum top is silent it is quiet it is still why because it is afternoon if you see in the afternoon we don't have a strong breeze or wind blowing so this particular tree is silent afternoon yellow september sunlight a few leaves yellowing, all its seeds fallen. Actually, one thing I forgot to tell you about labanum tree. Labanum tree is a deciduous type of tree which sheds its leaves and everything during the season of autumn. So if you remember about geography, you have coniferous trees, you have deciduous trees, you have cactus type of trees. 
uh, cactus uh, type of plantations and all. So here this particular labyrinth tree falls in the category of deciduous tree. So here before falling the, the, the leaves, when it, uh, when it becomes dry, it turns yellowish color. Flowers are all, already in yellow color. So entire tree looks yellow. So this is what the tree looks in this uh, in the month, in the season of autumn. So let's read what is given over here in the description. The poet describes a beautiful sunny autumn. The labyrinth tree is silent and still. It is laden with yellow leaves and yellow flowers in September because in the month of September they have autumn season away over in European nations. Its leaves have turned yellow because of the autumn season and all its seeds have fallen. So this is what is the first, you can say first stanza in the poem describes. I hope this part is clear to you. Let's move on to the next stanza. Till the goldfinch. Now let's listen first to the beautiful sound of goldfinch. You can just close your eyes and enjoy the sound. So, till the goldfinch comes with a twitching chirrup, a suddenness, a startlement at the branch. And you can see here is the goldfinch. The color of the bird is same as the color of the flowers, color of the leaves of the tree. So, just then a goldfinch alights on the labanum tree making short high pitched sounds. You have just now heard the goldfinch sound. It gives a high pitched sound. It enters the tree. It sits on the top of the tree. You can see at the branch end it sits. The goldfinch has her nest in the tree. Now this part we were not knowing and the poet is not actually has not revealed it out that yes why the goldfinch has come to this particular tree because it has its nest in the tree. On the mother's return, a sudden movement steals the tree. The, till the mother comes over there, the chicks are silent. You have seen the small chicks which cannot fly. They wait for their parent. They wait for the parent, you can say mother, when she comes or when it will come and feed them. And you have seen the small chicks opening, keeping their mouths open and the mother coming and feeding them, right? So here, the goldfinch has come. She has brought something for her chicks and her sound her high pitched sound, her chirrup, her twitching chirrup, you no, know, is heard by the chicks. They are they are awake. They are calling. They are you no. Know, they also start making noise. That is what is beautifully explained in this particular poem. Till the goldfinch comes with a twitching chirrup. Now, goldfinch we have already seen. You can see the, see the picture. It's a small yellow bird. Twitching. Twitching is nothing else but a small, often involuntary movement of the body. In this particular poem, it means brief. Okay. Chirrup. Chirrup, as you all know, the sound made by the bird is called, I, I will say as chirrup, right? A twitching, a brief chirrup. That is onomotopia used over here. What is onomotopia? We are going to learn after the end of all the onomotopias used in this particular poem. We will just recall what is onomotopia. A suddenness, a startlement. Now, suddenness and startlement, the sound sir, sir is repeated. It's alliteration over here for more effect in the poem. So, a suddenness, a startlement at a branch end. If you see, I have underlined the words which I have given on the right hand side, the meaning of it. So, twitching, we have already seen. Chirap also, you all know what is that. Startlement. Startlement actually here is means the instance of being startled. You have seen a bird, as soon as the bird sits on the branch, it is not quiet, you know, it makes sudden movements. So even here, the goldfinch has entered, it, has, it is sitting on the end of the branch, it is going to enter inside now and go towards the nest where her chicks are there. So then sleek as lizard, now here simile. Uh, the movement of the bird is compared to a lizard. Now you have lizards in your house. If you don't have, it's very good. But yes, lizards, if you see, they don't make any noise while walking, right? So then sleek, sleek in a sense, smooth. Then sleek as a lizard and alert and alert. 
alert and apoptosis is again used as now again alertation is used over here apoptosis suddenly she enters the thickness thickness in the sense the thickness of the tree the bird enters suddenly she enters smoothly she enters the thickness of the tree and a machine starts up of chittering here machine is what is machine and what is who is this chittering chittering of course you know the young ones the young ones of the birds when they make noise it is called as chitterings this word we are not familiar but the poet has beautifully used over here and here again chittering is onomatopoeia okay and a tremor of wings and trillings tremor means shaking of wings and trillings is nothing else but a series of high pitched sound you have seen the small chicks now they make high pitched sound to attract their mother towards them that yes we are here come and feed us we are hungry so again trillings are onomatopoeia uh, onomatopoeia used over here the whole tree trembles and thrills here yeah, again trembles and tree trembles and thrills is alliteration used here for more effect to be used in the poem the poetic device used to be here so trembles and thrills is nothing else but shake violently let's see the meaning in brief of course nothing to know before that let's see what is onomatopoeia in this figure of speech a word is found a sound similar to it examples of onomatopoeia in this poem are twitching chirrup chitterings trillings and whistle chirrup whistle chirrup is going to come next in the next slide this is nothing else but it is called as onomatopoeia i hope it is clear a word formed from a sound similar to it so you have this twitching chirrup of a bird you have chitterings of the young ones you have trillings of the young ones and you have whistle chirrup of this particular goldfinch which she makes later on while away uh, before leaving the tree so let's see the meaning of the previous line then sleek as a lizard and alert and abrupt she enters the thickness and a machine starts up of chitterings and a tremor of wings and trillings the whole tree trembles and thrills here the poet has compared her sleek alert and abrupt movements to that of a lizard the goldfinch has been called as a machine over here so here which is the machine machine is the goldfinch over here okay her little ones are excited on her arrival and they are chirping and chittering as i told you as soon as they get the sound they get hear the sound of the mother they also are activated they are activated they open their beaks they are waiting for their mother to come and put something what she has brought into their beaks or big why because they are feeling hungry next line it is the engine of her family here metaphor Now we have learned about similes. We are we have already learned about metaphors. We have already learned about alliteration. When are they used and why are they used? Here it, you see it is directly compared. Simile she was compared to a lizard, but here the metaphor she is compared. The comparison is directly used over here. It is the engine of her family. She is directly compared to be the engine of her family. Sorry, what is the engine? The chicks are the engine of the family. Stokes. Now she stokes it full, then floats out to a branch end, showing her bald face identity mask. Now showing her bald face identity mask is transfer epithet. We have already seen transfer epithet in the first poem. It is a photograph. So here again we are going to revise what is transferred epithet. So it is the engine of her family. Now you will see the meaning of the words underlined. Stokes nothing else here it is, but adds fuel. She what she does? She feeds her uh, young ones, and the young ones they become more energetic. They become become more active. Bird is nothing else. Okay, flirts, moves abruptly or jerkily with light steps. You have seen a bird; it will never make. It is never heavy. You feel bird to be light, right? So light movements of the bird. and bard is what strips her uh, showing her bard uh, face identity mask let's see about the transferred epithet a transferred epithet is a description which refers to a character or event but is used to describe a different situation or character now here if you see in the poem they have used her bard face identity mask is an example of a transfer epithet the flowers of lebanon tree if you see the flowers of lebanon tree are like bars okay looks like bars when when the bird sits behind the flowers the shadow of the flowers which falls on her face it seems that as if she is wearing a mask 
which has you know the shadow which falls on the face it like it shadow falls like bugs so as if she has worn a mask that has bugs okay so the flowers the shadow of the flowers on her face looks like she's wearing a mask that has bugs on it this is what transfer appetite so let's see about the explanation of the those particular lines it is the engine of a family it stalks it full and flirts out to a branch and showing her bar face identity marks by feeding her young one she has added fuel to the machine as a result the chicks now have the energy to be active and make noise after feeding her chicks the goldfinch flies up and rests on the end of the branch of the tree her identity concealed behind the yellow flowers and yellowing leaves so slowly mother she goes to the end of the branch and now slowly what she's going to go she's going to move back to the sky or you can say in search of food to get food for her for her uh, young ones then with ear delicate whistle chirp Uh, we remember whistle chirp again. We have used one more to play. One more to play over here. Of course, we have not used poet has used whispering. She launches away towards the infinity, and the labyrinth subsides to empty. This is what ear is what strange in a frightening or mysterious way. Launches means flies. Infinite, if you see, it's the sky. It's the limitless. subsides to empty become silent just as earlier so here what is the explanation we'll just see simple poem but it has a deeper meaning and it has mystery behind it then with ear delicate whistle chirp whispering she launches away towards the infinity infinite and the labyrinth subsides to empty So after some time, the goldfinch makes a strange, short, high-pitched sound. Then she flies away towards the infinite sky. The labyrinth tree becomes silent again after the departure of the goldfinch, and everything seems to be the same as it was before the arrival of the goldfinch. Before the arrival of the goldfinch, what was it? It was complete silence. So this is what is the end of the poem. why i said it has got deeper meaning because this particular poet ted hulse he had married sylvia plate if you remember you had a poem in 10th standard the mirror of course i think for you it was not there it was uh, removed from the syllabus but she is a confessional poet and it is said that at the age of 30 she committed suicide if you see in the beginning they have used yellow september yellow september is nothing else but the september month month is you no know, it symbolizes a campaign to you know uh, to spread awareness about suicide and here if you ask or if you just uh, see the deeper meaning of the poem the labyrinth tree is nothing else but the life of the poet and goldfinch is nothing else but the you no know, uh, his wife sylvia played actually and the kids So here, like he wants to point because he was very very sad after her death. He wants to point about how the life was with her presence. And now, if you see the words, the lines what he has used is, uh, let's see here, and the labyrinth subsides to empty. The labyrinth, uh, sorry, uh, she launches away towards the infinite. She went away. She is no more. And again, our life has now become empty. And yellow, why? Because yellow symbolizes. Death. This we did not because it is will not be asked in the CBSC uh, syllabus. It is just for your information. You can do more research about. You can search more about it. You can know think deeply about this particular poem. But the main thing is what it's a very it's beautiful poem which tells about the fluctuations and about how the life is dull and it depends on how you take the life, how you make your life. Okay, so it's a beautiful poem. I hope you liked it. Read the poem. you can once again go through the video go through the uh, you know meanings and uh, even the uh, figures of speech used by the poet try to understand the poet uh, poem if you have any doubt you can ask so with that we end with this particular poem that is the labanum talk see you then bye bye take care